A warm welcome to tonight's edition of Breeding to Win. The 2018-2019 racing season is drawing to a close and we're only a week away from Champions Day at Gravel Racecourse, which will be the final feature race meeting of the season. And what a season it's been. For now, let's take a look at what you can look forward to on tonight's show. We're back at Aventure for lunch with Pippa and her team. Currently enjoying a rich vein of form, Leading freshman sire, captain of all, receives high praise indeed from a number of key trainers and jockeys. We get the very latest on top sire ideal world and I catch up with Graham Hawkins about the upcoming annual racing masters. to win team are regulars down at Aventure Farm, generally looking at their fabulous horses. This time round, they took time out of their busy schedule to enjoy the hospitality of Aventure and catch up with Pippa Mickelborough. We've got something special for you on tonight's show. I'm here at Aventure Restaurant where I'll be having lunch with champion jockey Lyle Hewitson, jockey MJ Bailefeld, our host Pippa Mickelbra, the winemaker and the chef who will be taking us through today's lunch menu. I'm really looking forward to this very festive lunch. Please come inside and join me for what looks like being a fun afternoon. And you've been in the wine business for over 30 years and been here at Aventure since 2011, so you really know the ingredients. And uh, what have you chosen for us to drink with the starter today? Thank you, Fee. I've chosen two wines. The, uh, the, one, the first one is the Saraband Sauvignon Blanc Reserve 2017 Vintage. The other wine that we chose for, for the starters is our Pinot Noir Chardonnay 2019. And I refer to this wine as our beloved pink wine. Well, tasting the Saraband now, it's, it's delicious. It's really fresh and crisp, and I've got very, very fond mem memories of Saraband. I used to ride her when she was in training, as Pippa knows, oh, and I follow her since she's been on the farm. But delicious wines, and going to go with our delicious starters as well. Wonderful menu here, Zinia, at uh, Aventure. It's, it's always very difficult to choose anything off the menu because you've got so many delicious things. It's very hard to um, work here. <laughs> we've, we've, we've all chosen something different yeah. today. And to start, as I said, the Salmon Roses is one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. And what makes this work? so well because I know I know sushi is very popular but this is not quite no. sushi but it's got some it's good our variation it's it's a little play on on um, sushi because Melanie my business partner and I was not here today we love sushi so it's also using local salmon it's smoked salmon from French hook avo prawns wasabi uh, pickled ginger so it's all the elements that make it up but a little local infused flavor it combines all the interesting perceptions that one has uh, in tastes because it has mm. umami, mm. it has some mm. acidity, mm. some Sweet. a bit of sweetness as well. So mm. that's what makes it, I think, so popular because it hits all the spots when you eat a dangerous dish to work with wine. <laughs> but I think the Saraband, <laughs> works well with, with the complexity from wood aging, uh, oaking, mm. it, uh, it does work well, mm. yes. 
And from a chef's perspective, your tongue is divided into different areas. So you've got sweet, savory, salty, um, bitter, and umami. Umami is quite a new um, discovery, actually. We've known about all the others for hundreds of years, but umami is only a very recent discovery in terms of a combination of all of those. Hey, Jan? Yes, it was called the fifth, the fifth, the fifth sense. sense. Yeah, is umami. So you'll find that in soya sauce. MJ, it's great to have you jockeys here this morning, taking time out of your heavy schedule. How's the season gone for you? Because you were injured early on, so you had a bit of an unfortunate setback. Yeah, I haven't really been busy, I must be honest. I mean, obviously, I had the operation done in September, so I only started riding my season had a bit of a four months break. Been a little bit unlucky in the, the winter um, features. We just got beaten on, on two or three of the features and run second, so been a little bit stiff. Need a bit of a change of luck, but yeah, we're happy. Um, obviously, riding for Vaughan, is, we didn't take horses to Durban, and I'm not travelling as much. But it's going all right, I can't complain, and I'm sure the summer season is going to be exciting. We've, we've really got some nice young horses, and just hope for a change of luck, and then things will take off again. And Lau, we're all rooting for you to win the championship again. It's uh, really hard work at the moment because there's yourself, there's Musi, there's Anton, all in con contention. And it's one day one goes a little ahead, the next day, and you had a good weekend, you had some good winners. Hard work. Yes, it is hard work. Um, unfortunately, I was in the same boat as MJ. First two months of the season, I was also off with a knee injury. Um, but quickly got myself back into the race. And, you know, it's, it's actually been a great season. I've recently... Um, surpassed my most winners of the season so it really is going well considering and um, yeah I think it, it's really tight but it's been great for racing the fact that it's uh, one guy ahead today and the next tomorrow so I think it's promoted the sport a bit and I'm happy that I could be, be doing that for, for horse racing I think we needed it and um, I'm just happy that uh, things are going well and I'm going to keep, keep going. Well, of course, winning the championship last year as an apprentice, that goes down in history. I mean, that was, uh, that's a hard thing to uh, get over. But to be there again, second year on the, on the chop, that's really something. Yes, yeah. Um, I think it would be a little bit more special to me winning it this time around. Um, of course, like you said, it was a record-breaking achievement, um, winning as an apprentice. But to, to do it again, just to, to prove everything, um, that would be really special. So I'm working hard. It's, it's, uh, it's busy. And um, this next month will be be a big one so I'm yeah, just hoping everything goes according to plan. And I know you jockeys I think it's because it's such high pressure for you you actually do really enjoy your food and your wines when you get the opportunity so today's a real treat. Uh -huh. Yes it is a treat for sure um, but I am racing tomorrow so it's still going to be... I'm going to slightly watch what you're yeah. but Anyway uh, these starters are delicious don't you agree? Great really really nice. Fantastic. Could be a couple of plus offs tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us here today. I mean, you're the whole reason for this lunch. You're our host for the day. And apart from the fantastic food and wines we're, we're having, what is the main attraction for people at Aventure? It's got to be the horses as well. Well, I hope it's uh, everybody and the horses and the wine and the food and the farm and the roses. But I think it's just a, a, a family owned farm. Um, it's been here a while now. And uh, as urban creep gets closer, we sort of straddling the circumference of Somerset West and Stellenbosch and I suppose it's been going for a while now so if we haven't got it right by now then you know it should pop up and go up. <laughs> you must be very proud of the whole team here at Aventure because it really has come together well. You assume yeah, as a super think, chef, we've got yeah. the super Jan, the super yeah. winemaker and you've got your jockeys here as well and you've got to be proud of your jockey signings because they've been exceptional. <laughs> Listen you know every, I, I've been here a long time you know and I mean yes I will, I will say that a lot of the people that currently work with us I chose, Jan being one of them. He came up my driveway, rescued me from a fate worse than death with some scrawny winemaker. And um, you know, we have our run-ins, but winemakers are all a bit, you know, different. A bit, a bit like chefs, a little bit different. But Zuni and Mel are great, you know, really. I mean, I get on very well with both of them. We have our run-ins, we have blocked drains and broken cars and things like that. But as far as my jockeys are concerned, I mean, you know, obviously the horses is my first love on the farm, but I do, I do, I do enjoy looking after vineyards too, to be honest. They're similar and need the same nurturing as uh, wine. But the jocks, I love looking after them and I miss oh, them when yeah. they go. Okay, Jan, we're moving into the main courses. What wines are you pouring us uh, for this treat? At the moment, I'm pouring some 
2017 Pinotage for MJ. Some wonderful, intense flavors. It has a juicy mouthfeel, ripe plums, and some earthiness and, and a whiff of spice. I think it will really pair well with, uh, with the roulade. The signature dish, Zunia, the, the roast duck, and we decided to use the Luna de Mille Chardonnay. Now, this is a Chardonnay that I always describe as a Chardonnay for the Chardonnay lover because it's fully fermented in, in wood, so it's a serious, uh, full-witted wine, uh, well-bodied well and in structure. And the, uh, due to the maturation and fermentation in oak, uh, the wine has lots of rich orange peel and citrus flavors, which pairs brilliantly with, with the roast duck. Interestingly enough, the term, the words Luna de Mil means honeymoon in, in Spanish. So a really uh, wonderful wine to pair with this roast duckling, our signature dish at Aventir Estate. So here, before we talk about the three mains that we've got coming up, and they look very, very delicious as well, the roulade, um, something mm. new on the menu for me, I haven't seen it before, mm. but it again looks to be so many different flavours. A roulade is basically a roll, so it's pancakes that we stuff, and it's um, leek, butternut, spinach and feta, and then it is served with a tomato fondue, which is the combination of flavors, really, really lovely. Mm. And of course, then the signature di dish, the duck, which I'm having, yeah. but that's a real wholesome dish. That is. Um, I did mention to Pippa that we're going to call the restaurant Quackers, but she said no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's an art to cooking it. It's slow cooked and then it's crisped up. And um, of course, the sauce makes it. It's a stock that we make, and then we add in all the ingredients, and it's cooked over a long, long time. So it must be crispy on the outside and soft and juicy on the inside. We could never take it off the menu. Well, the main course is arrived. It looks absolutely delicious, yeah, doesn't it, Hannah? It but uh, before we start, um, what's it like being the partner of a top jockey? Um, well, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a racing family. Um, my dad's a ferry in Dubai, my mom's an assistant trainer. So I understand the lifestyle very well, um, although he is busy a lot of the time. Nalal, you had the duck for lunch today, so I assume you don't have too light a weight. <laughs> it's a delicious dish, isn't it? It's very, very nice. I'm, I'm one of those people that come here and always sort of lean towards the same dish. Um, I really love it, and um, yeah, I, fortunately tomorrow I don't have light rides, so I can afford to indulge in this. It's, it's really good, and uh, uh, it's one of my favourite favorite meals. And MJ, you're making the trip to Joburg back now with Lyle and Hannah. You've got to ride there tomorrow. You'll sort of wait for tomorrow. You went for the roulade, but it does look delicious. The food's too good for you. We're not worry about the wait tomorrow. <laughs> wait the wait tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give it a skip now, that's for sure. Moving into the final furlong of this delicious lunch today, and the conversation is certainly getting very festive after a few glasses of wine. But Jan is going to talk to us now about the Aventure brandy that we're going to have with these lovely desserts. Mm. Yes, this is our Potstall estate brandy. Remember that Aventure is a wine estate, so all the grapes for all the wines and brandies come only from this parcel of land, which is called the Aventure Wine Estate. And the Potstall brandy is matured for more than 10 years uh, after it was distilled. We actually mature it in French oak uh, used red wine barrels. And it's really a handcrafted product and can stand, we can literally call it a South African cognac, but because of some silly rules, we're not allowed to say the word cognac. But this is what it is. So it's a 100% Potstilled and estate matured brandy. Well, Sonia, this 
Brandy is a real treat. It's absolutely delicious. But uh, the, the three desserts we've got on the table this afternoon are very, very special. I've yes. gone for the deep fried ice cream. As Pippa will tell you, my children come here especially for this. It is so delicious, and it's great to know it stays on the menu. It'll never, it'll never, it'll never leave. It's got its pride of place right on the top. It's the first dessert that we have. Yes, yeah, absolutely delicious. Seventeen years it's been on the menu. Absolutely delicious. As long as you've been here. Yeah. Um, and of course, the panna cotta looks mm. really, really gorgeous. Very attractive. Quite a light dessert. Well, panna cotta is um, an Italian dessert, but we've put our own little South African stamp on it by serving it with preserved kumquats. And um, I have flavored this with cardamom, and we've made like a popcorn brittle. So it's just a little bit of fun, a, a lighter dessert to end off your meal, especially if you have something like the duck. You're not going to have a tipsy tart or a um, chocolate tart like that because it's very... It's very rich, so you're going to go with something a little bit lighter. Mm. Yes, Yan and MJ have gone for the heavy route. They've gone for the chocolate tart. <laughs> <laughs> looks very good. MJ's nearly finished. Um, that looks no, very tasty as well. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with brandy and the, the dark chocolate, chocolate go, Perfect. go and this. terribly good. Mm. Pippa, this has been a fantastic lunch. I think we've all really, really enjoyed it. Now, we're coming towards the end of the season. Um, Horse-wise, stallion-wise, um, and what have we got in store for the rest of the season for you? Your stallions have done very well. Yeah, obviously now we're, we, what, a month away from the first falls due. That's the next um, plan of action. Vaz in good shape. He's obviously, you know, he's 20 now, and he's got a, quite a bad arthritic knee. But the shareholders will use him um, only this year. Oratori is flying along sweetly. We need some more support for him. He's got to really have a big horse now, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But considering how well he's doing, he's in the top six in South Africa, he's leading sire on artificial going. I think the most important thing for, for me to get through to people in Oratoria now is that he had, he's had nine international Group 1 winners, and not one of them was under four years of age. So he's had them at four, five, six, and seven. His oldest in South Africa are four. So he's already had his Group 1 win at four, he's already had many Group 2s, Group 3s, but really the, the joy for, for Oratoria is what's coming. When those horses hit four, five, and six, that's where he's going to hopefully hit the high spots. The exact opposite of VAR. I mean, really, VAR's two, three, four, and then we're done. Oratoria is warming up at four, five, and six. So really true going forward, that's what I'm looking for, support from everybody. Um, he needs to produce a big horse, but, but he's had the mares. Pepper, we can't thank you enough for having us all here today. It's been a lovely lunch, absolutely delicious, and we've had some good banter, some good conversation. Really wishing everyone all the best for the restaurant, to the chef, to the winemaker, to you, Pippa, for the rest of the season, and of course to our jockeys, MJ and Lyle. Best of luck and best of love in Hong Kong, Flam. Cheers. 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 Nevoel was no doubt a champion racehorse in his own right, and he's currently leading freshman sire. His progeny are receiving accolades from trainers and jockeys around the country. Listen, I've got a couple. I'm very, very happy. I've got a half-sister to that horse, Priceless Ruler, that won on the weekend, belonging to the Kisvetters. I've got a colt for Dave Shaw, that actually he didn't buy him for me, but uh, uh, Jilly and I had given him two stars. Very nice horse. And Jill and Pete Demarini's little filly ran third the other day. Very happy, looking for a bit further. You can tell Johnny, at this stage, I'm very happy with them. 
What you are is uh, really, really honestly um, out of the uh, captain of all. I've had the chance to ride her a few times now. She was very, very unlucky in the in the Alan Robinson Group 1 where she got turned sideways the last 150 meters at such a vital stage of the race. And I, I honestly believe that she could have won the, that race. She won her, her next start very, very easy. And uh, her last start in the Group 2 moved through the field uh, really easy in my hands. She's a very nice filly and um, just got touched off um, she got beat half length by uh, uh, the stable companion, um, which they did think that was a very nice filly. So yeah, uh, she's a filly that's done really well and um, nice big action for us. Not a very big filly, but um, very well put together filly and uh, really easy to ride. I think she's a filly that could get away with a mile, but I think her best distance is probably a 12 or 14 at the moment but uh, she's obviously going to go for a stab at that mile on uh, Gold Cup day and uh, we'll see how she goes there. I, I was in my early 20s I think when the first uh, Al Muftis got to the sales ring when I was walking around there with my dad and you know seeing them and uh, obviously the old man bought a hell of a bunch of them you know in his first season so they've made a huge impression on me and the way it, you know in which I look at horses and uh, Al Mufti stamped them through Captain L. I mean, the Captain Ls look very much like the Al Muftis. And I see exactly the same type of shape in, in the Captain of Alls. You know, I mean, we've been lucky to, I think we secured five of them in, in his first season, of which a couple hasn't run yet. But uh, obviously we've had great success with what you are and Captain Morgan. We've gone back and he invested heavily again uh, this season. So I think we got four or five of them from sale so far this year. I think really in the mold of, of, of Al Mufti. It doesn't look like he throws his leg. You know, he throws a perfectly conformed horse with great shape, great athleticism, and, and, and very, very good balance. Look, I think he'll just build on his first season. He's, he's having a cracking first season. So uh, it can only build from here. And I think, you, you know, the, the, the quality of mare he'll get will, will just improve as it goes. I really think that El Mufti legacy is, is uh, shining through and, and, and through all of them, you know. Ideal World stands at Moritz Fantin Stud and is the sire of the Vodacom Durban July runner-up and Sun Met winner Rainbow Bridge. We get an update on the stallion Ideal World. Moritz Fontaine is renowned for some magnificent racehorses and stallions, some fabulous names in the ilk of Spanish Gallard, the Great Fort Wood and now Ideal World with his talented classic progeny. Ideal World has to be one of the most regally bred stallions currently standing in South Africa. His dam, a champion filly, Banks Hill, was bred and raised by Judmont Farms. Banks Hill, a full sister to champion stallion Dan Silly, is out of the very special champion broodmare, Hasili. This bloodline has produced classic winners across Europe and is very significant in South Africa, with the best stakes record of runners to black type earners in the country. Ideal World has produced talented sons such as Cape Speed, Irish Pride, Dark Moon Rising, Hermosa Mundo, who is one of the only horses to have completed the unofficial Cape Staying Triple Crown when winning the Gold Bowl, the Gold Vase and Gold Cup in the same year. 2019 Grade 1 SA Derby winner Samurai Warrior who showed class when coasting to victory in a much anticipated final leg of the SA Triple Crown. Talented daughters Inveresh, Coral Bay and Helen's Ideal have shown class over sprints and classic distances. 
Ideal World, in his first crop, produced none other than South Africa's top race mare, Smart Cool. On the journey to being crowned champion and the highest rated filly in the country, she won the Grade 1 Will Abington as a three-year-old, then later in the year the Grade 2 Ipitombi Stakes before dual Grade 1 wins in the Cape Summer in January. Smart Cool trounced the best in the country via the Grade 1 Paddock Stakes, where she accounted for Inara, Bella Bella and same jurisdiction and then trounced one of the best fields in the 2016 JMB Met in recent memory. It's the funny that strikes the front and she's pulling clear in the closing stages. Smart Call wins the JMB Met. Ideal World's talented son Rainbow Bridge has exemplified progress from his very first start. He went unbeaten in his first five starts and has been on every racing fan's mind since winning the Winter Guineas in his second start. It's Rainbow Bridge, the one they got to get to, 100 metres to go. Rocket Gun Dunn is wearing him down on the inside. Rainbow Bridge, Rocket Gun Dunn, Rainbow Bridge won it. Rainbow Bridge continued on his promising Cape summer season to win the pinnacle of grade one races in the 2019 Sun Met for the late Chris Gerber. Rainbow Bridge is cutting him back with each and every stride. Do it again. And is flying. Rainbow Bridge is charging our best of all. Rainbow Bridge wins it. Ideal world, what makes them so good? Trainers have described them as consistent. They have ability to quicken after high cruising speed. Good size and strength. They have overwhelming amounts of talent. For a service fee of 40,000 with a live foal, Ideal World is not to be missed. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome the Racing and Marketing Executive of Gold Circle, Graham Hawkins, on the line. Graham, welcome to the Breeding to Win show. Hi, Julie. Thanks, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Well, before we touch on the Racing Masters, which is certainly a highlight on the social calendar, Graham, I have to take this opportunity to compliment you and your team on a fantastic KwaZulu-Natal feature season. Yeah, it's been absolutely great, and as always, it absolutely flies by. Um, obviously, the highlight was the uh, 2019 Vodacom Durban July. Uh, the scratching, of course, of Awam is well documented, but that aside, it was an absolutely fantastic day. Mm. Well, Graham, we've had some fantastic racing throughout the season, but it's great to see it culminate down in KwaZulu-Natal. And it's not over yet, obviously, with Champions Day at Gravel happening next Saturday. Yes, well, of course, the season comes to an end on Saturday the 27th of July uh, with four grade one races and on top of that the Elan Gold Cup uh, and a host of other graded races so it's a great way to bring the curtain down in Champions season mm. each year and uh, we're really looking forward to the action on Saturday. Well what has become a tradition over the years is the Racing Masters. Now Graham tell us more about this event. Yeah, well, as you say, it has become a tradition, uh, Jules. It's uh, the 25th renewal of the Racing Masters. It all began uh, way back in the 90s in Johannesburg, as you may recall, and it survived all these years, obviously moved to its new home um, at the Wild Coast Sun, where we've been for the last decade or so. And as you say, it's just an opportunity for members of the racing fraternity, be they jockeys, be they trainers, be they owners, be they punters, or just a fun seekers, to come together in the spirit of camaraderie to celebrate the end of champion season. And each year we crown a new champion, a new green jacket holder. Two years ago it was Anthony Delpesh, last year it was Anthony Sheer. So it certainly helps you if your first name is Anthony, it would seem. Uh, but yeah, it's just... Uh, it's just, as you said, become an absolutely mm -hmm. delightful tradition for people to come together and have fun. It's open to everybody. We, we, we send out entry forms. We're advertising, as you know, on Teletrack, so it's open to anybody. We use Desiree from Sports and Promotions to deal with the entry, so uh, her number appears uh, quite regularly on Teletrack, uh, and uh, we will accept entries right up until the last moment. Obviously, we move in the day after the Elan Gold Cup on Sunday, the 28th of July, uh, we all move into the Wild Coast. Uh, the actual tournament takes place on the Monday and the Tuesday, and then we check out on the Wednesday. And there's so much happening in between, apart from the golf, which uh, the guys obviously take quite seriously. Uh, but there's a party at the clubhouse on the Monday night. There's an official prize-giving dinner on the Tuesday night. 
Uh, obviously, we all get together for breakfast in the morning. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for even outsiders to come and spend some time uh, with perhaps people they would otherwise not have the opportunity to do so. So we welcome entries from outside. Uh, there's no limit on the numbers because uh, the hotel is big and the golf course is just as big. Graham, thank you so much for your time. We wish you all the best for next Saturday, Champions Day out at Gravel Racecourse. And thank you so much for joining us on the Breeding to Win show. Thank you, Jules. Again, as I say, thanks for the opportunity. Yes, it's one hell of a weekend. Great racing on the Saturday and then a lot of fun on the Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. And uh, this year, quite coincidentally, it all just ends on the 31st of July, which is the final day of the racing year and the racing season. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of Breeding to Win. Join the team next week for more Breeding to Win action. From myself, Julie Alexander, and the rest of the team, good night.